All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. My name is Jenny Bickley. I am the Education Abroad Specialist that works with the Public Health Perspectives Japan program. Uh, joining me today is Professor Motomu Ibaraki, who will be the lead uh, faculty that will be traveling with the group uh, to Japan. Um, I am going to um, go through a PowerPoint presentation, a short PowerPoint presentation with you. And then I have a video to share um, during the course of the presentation, if you have any questions, um, I ask that you enter them into the Q&A, um, and then at the end, we can answer the questions um, and make sure that we have um, all the information covered that you would like to know. So I will go ahead and get started um, with the PowerPoint. Um, let's see. So I've already introduced us. Um, I typically take care of sort of the um, logistics side of things here in, the, in at Ohio State. And then Professor Ibaraki will be traveling with you um, along with another um, faculty or staff re resident director. Um, the dates of travel will be May 10th, the 28th, um, 2021. The program starts in Tokyo and then um, it travels around to a variety of cities throughout Japan. Um, one thing different with the program this year than in years past um, is uh, uh, because of COVID, um, we will be traveling as a group. So the, the students that apply and are admitted to the program will be leaving Columbus all together as a group. Um, so the program fee and program inclusions will look a little bit different than they have in years past. So what is this program all about? So um, many of you may know this program is an introduction to global public health concepts with an emphasis on Japanese society. Um, you're going to look at the equation between culture, economy, the environment, and public health. Um, there are many field trips to reinforce and deepen your understanding of the concepts. Um, so, you know, trips to Hiroshima and Fukushima um, to look at Japan's public health concerns and contributing factors, and then a closer look at the role of environmental health factors and their effect on public health. Um, the course you'll be registering for if you're admitted to this program will be Public Health 3189.03. Um, now, if you are a public health major, this can be used as your capstone experience. Um, once you're admitted to the program, and I'll talk about application in a minute, you will receive instructions on how to register yourself for this course. So it will be a summer 2021 registration, and you will receive graded OSU credit um, for the course. So you will receive a, a letter grade for participation. Um, students will stay in single rooms in a hotel style accommodation. So you'll be traveling um, to a variety of locations, staying in about four or five different hotels throughout Japan. Some meals will be provided. However, most meals you will need to pay for out of pocket. Um, and there will be a variety of op options for you. Um, so, you know, anywhere from buying food at a local grocery store um, to restaurants that you can choose from based on your budget. So the program fee, um, we are working now to set the program fee, although because um, of all things related to COVID, we are a little bit behind in announcing those and getting those established. Um, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we will have some sort of estimate for you. Um, the program fee will include your international airfare um, that will depart, um, fly from Columbus to Tokyo return, your accommodation, so the hotels that you'll be staying at, some of your meals, program related field trips and dinners. And again, I mentioned it before, but um, uh, a couple of lunches and dinners. You will also need to pay for three hours of OSU credit. So that will appear on your statement of fees and accounts for summer 2021. Um, some out of pocket expenses that you want to consider when you're thinking about, you know, how much is this program going to cost? Um, so a passport is something that you'll need regardless of where you um, travel to for your education abroad program. Um, and then a visa is a travel document that you sometimes need to enter into other countries. So um, US passport holders do not need a visa for travel to Japan. 
However, if you are traveling on a passport other than a US passport, you may need to um, apply for a visa prior to departure. Any travel related expenses, so you know your luggage or a new pair of shoes, um, those are all considerations that you'll need to take into account when you're planning your budget. Um, most of your meals are not included. Um, any in-country personal expenses, so any souvenirs you wish to buy, um, they would not be included. We also ask that each student um, attend an international travel consultation prior to departure. So this can either be at the Student Health Center or at your primary care physician, um, where you'll talk about um, you know, anything that you need to be concerned with health-wise um, with travel to Japan. And then when you submit your application, there will be a $150 application fee that you'll have to also submit, um, pay for at the time of applying. Um, and that application fee, if you are not admitted to the program or if the program does not run, then that fee will be refunded to you. Um, as far as scholarships go, there are several scholarships uh, through our office as well as other um, departments and units across campus. If you go to our webpage, oia.osu.edu, you can find a list of the scholarships that we are aware of. Um, scholarships are you know, all different as far as you know, who is eligible to apply for them, that some are merit-based, um, some are academic-based, um, and um, some are dependent on where you're going or what, what time of year you're going. So it's important to read through the list carefully. Um, you can begin looking at that now. Um, some of the application deadlines um, are a little bit different to the program deadline. Um, so you wanna begin planning early. Um, financial aid is also available for you as you um, are planning your experience. So um, we will um, list, we will publish a budget letter to go with the program once the fee is established that you can take with you to financial aid um, to potentially appeal your cost of attendance um, as it will be going up with your um, study abroad. So as far as eligibility goes, preference is given to majors or minors in public health or health biology related areas. Um, but certainly we encourage students of all majors to apply. Um, in previous years, we've had, you know, sort of students from across the university, which makes it a, a rich experience for everyone. Um, we expect students to have a GPA of 2.5 or higher. Um, and um, you must have completed uh, two years of undergraduate education by the time you depart. So um, if you, that is not at the time of application, but at the end um, prior to the May departure time. As far as the application goes, um, you can apply online. You can connect to the application either through our webpage or through Buckeye Link. The deadline currently is set for January 6, 2021. Um, however, that is subject to change at this point, um, depending on when we announce the program fee. But I would aim for that January 6 deadline so that you know that you're not going to be late. Um, we do have a $150 application fee that you'll need to submit. Um, along with your personal questions. So you will have um, to answer some personal questions with your application, um, you know, kind of outlining why you wanna participate in study abroad, why you want this program in particular. Um, we ask that students do invest a little bit of time and energy into these questions um, because it's one of the only things we have to kind of help us decide um, who would be a suitable applicant. Um, so while we don't ask for sort of a 10 page essay, we do expect more than one or two sentences. Um, there is also an academic recommendation that you'll need to, um, to submit. So that will be all electronic and you'll be prompted um, through the application uh, to do that. Um, and then um, within three to four weeks of, um, of submission of the application, you should hear a notification of admission. There have been um, times in years past where we have also required a short interview. Um, so that may also be something that, that you can expect with your application, but that will come after the deadline um, and we'll contact you with further details about that. Um, now, education abroad and COVID. So um, currently where the university stands with um, the COVID pandemic is they have suspended all international travel through spring semester. So we are not sending students abroad um, until um, summer 2021, potentially. 
Um, so we have been given permission to proceed cautiously with summer 2021 plans. Um, the university is expected to reach a final decision on whether or not they will allow travel sometime in mid to late January. So you can expect a decision shortly after you've submitted your application as to whether or not um, we will be um, sending students abroad in summer 2021. Um, so um, I also have, <laughs> Professor Ibaraki, do you have anything you'd like to share before I share the video? Uh, no, no, okay. that's fine. Yeah. All right, I will go ahead and share my screen again and I will play the video.
Okay. Um, we do have one question and then I'll um, let Professor Ibaraki talk a little bit about the in-country itinerary. Um, the question is, do you recommend having a background in the language if we plan on applying for this trip? Um, so the answer to that question is you do not need a background in the language. Um, I mean, it's always helpful to have some knowledge, but certainly it's not an expectation for this program. Um, you will have um, translators with you for the duration of the, of the program. Um, and then also translators at any of the, um, the museums or the um, places that, that you'll go that you'll need to uh, converse with the um, local uh, locals. Um, so Professor Ebrocki, do you just want to share a little bit about um, sort of, a, of what the students can expect if they, if they go on this program? Uh, okay. Um, so basically, we're going to stay in Tokyo about 10 days. And during that time, we're going to visit um, hospitals and like a home for aged people and other places. And during that time, we also visit uh, Fukushima, um, Fukushima, which have an earthquake about 10, nine years ago, almost 10 years ago, and have a damage. And so we're going to visit um, Fukushima nuclear plants which actually have an accent. And at this point, um, they already uh, cleaned up the mess. And it's very safe uh, for us to just visit them and understand what's going on. So we actually, I brought students last two years uh, to Fukushima and look at the uh, details and of the accents. And um, after that, we're gonna visit uh, one, two, three, then anyway, we have like a five, four, five different places to visit. Uh, first place we're gonna visit is um, Toyama Prefecture, which has um, uh, cadmium poisoning in about 50, 60 years ago, so-called itai itai disease. And we're gonna actually uh, visit the museum and actually talk with uh, one of the person uh, who lost uh, her grandma uh, due, to the, uh, due to the disease. And after that, we're gonna visit Hiroshima and we're gonna stay in Hiroshima two nights. And we're gonna visit the museum or atomic bomb museum. And also we actually um, have a talk uh, from a storyteller who actually who lost, I mean, who lost uh, her aunts due to nuclear bomb. And um, after that, we're gonna visit um, Minamata and again, this is another uh, environment-related disease happens um, in 60s and 70s, uh, in 50s and 60s. That is called Minamata disease. It's a mercury poisoning. And again, we're gonna visit the museum and actually look, actually have a talk from a, uh, a patient who are actually suffered by the, the, the disease. And after that, we're gonna visit uh, way back to nose. Uh, to visit uh, Ishinomaki Sendai place, which had earthquake again about 10 years ago and have a tsunami. So we have a uh, visit hospital who helped the people uh, that time. And after that, we're gonna visit uh, one of the uh, elementary school which totally damaged by tsunami and lost a bunch of, like, over, I think it was 200 over 300 students due to tsunami. And we actually have a chance to gonna talk, um, listen to a talk given by uh, parents who lost their children. So um, there's a main trip, uh, field trip we're gonna do after the um, stay in Tokyo. But this is a really good um, program uh, to understand what's going on in public health in Japan. Uh, with aspect of the socials and environment aspect. And the week travels after this day in Tokyo really give you a chance to understand what's going on in, in, in uh, countries like Japan and also understand um, what happens if environmental disaster happens. Uh, for example, chemical release like mercury and cadmium is poisoning happens atomic bomb and other things, and tsunami is, is another factor. So obviously it's very hard for us to understand what's going on um, 
here in the United States because we would have a, you know, we'd have a disaster like that. And also, you know, I can give you a lectures about Minamata disease and uh, Itaite disease in the lecture, in the lecture room. But um, what you can learn from this trip is way, 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 way bigger than what you can learn from um, the classroom settings. So as you as you watch the videos, the last slide show that what you see is. Um, way more bigger impact compared to what you can learn from the classroom settings. And obviously this is a good, you know, it's not really cheap, you know, you have to spend money, but they're a good, uh, like a good investment for you to visit Japan, to see what happens and um, what's going on and also what happened in Japan. So, um, I know it's not cheap. I know that, but I highly recommend. And no, you know, I I actually conducted this program for the last four or five years. Um, everybody happy? Nobody complain about this program at all. Fortunately, everybody happy about it. And some of the students told me that they actually changed their mindset about you know public health and health aspect. Uh, in this field, and some actually students change their uh, career path um, because of this uh, this trip. So, um, if you have any question, please let me know. And also, um, Jennifer uh, showed the videos, and the video showed the website uh, talking about u.osc.edu/japan. The site gives you like a videos uh, of. Um, Videos, videos of the program, and also um, like details of, of the uh, the schedules. Uh, I don't have the update for 2021 yet, but you can find out what, what happened in 2019. And also you can look at the uh, uh, blog written by students. And also the website have a link to the YouTube uh, study abroad Japan uh, channels, and you can actually watch uh, the video which is taken by students. So there's a bunch of information available from those websites. And, you know, if you have any questions, just please shoot email to me. Or if you want to see me in person, not in person, let's say on the Zoom, uh, you can make an appointment with me and I can chat with you. So, Jennifer, you. it's done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we do have another question here, and I would encourage anybody that has any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A. Um, this question is, if we were to apply and get in, but then no longer feel safe traveling due to COVID, as we get closer to the date, can we decline and get the application fee refunded? Um, so I will actually, I mean, that's a bit of a, a tough question, and there's lots of variables. I will put our cancellation policy in the chat. Um, I will also say that if the if you apply and are admitted and the university decides to cancel the program, then um, the 150 will be refunded. Your program fee um, um, will be due in its entirety at the beginning of summer, um, but um, you will start accruing sort of, um, you know, we will, we will start making payments on your behalf from the time that you're admitted until the departure. If you withdraw sometime in the middle of the program and the university and our office are still planning on running the program, um, unless there are extenuating circumstances, then you would be subject to the cancellation policy. Um, if halfway through spring semester, the university says, no, um, you know, although we said in January that we're gonna run this program, but we've decided not to run this program, um, then you would receive your 150 back and you would not be subject. So um, if there are no extenuating circumstances um, and you accept your offer and then um, decide to withdraw, then you would be subject to the cancellation policy. I've also put my email address in the chat. Um, then you can feel free to send me an email. Um, I'm also not on physically on campus, but um, I am meeting with students via Zoom. Um, so the question is, can you give me more details on the group flights? Are students allowed to travel 
before and after or after the program. So on a typical year, yes, students are, um, the travel to Japan, to and from Japan is independent. So you would be, ha you would have a little more flexibility as to travel before and after the program. Um, for 2021, and this is only for 2021, it's the, because of COVID, um, we will be traveling as a group. And the reason behind that is we wanna kind of maintain students all traveling together. Um, if we need to bring groups home because you know something flares up related to COVID, then we have the ability to do so very quickly. So for 2021, it will be a group flight that will be traveling to and from Columbus together. Um, beyond 2021, um, we do intend to return to the independent travel option. Um, this is a question, Benjamin, no question is low priority. So I'm glad that you asked. Um, you say, I'm here for the STEP program. Do you need anything from me to confirm my attendance? Um, as far as STEP goes, we will pull the attendance record from the webinar um, and I will um, go into the STEP portal and um, indicate that you attended. So that goes for all the STEP students that are here um, for their STEP reasons. Um, in the past, what has the program fee been? So I did have a quick look and 2020 for 2020, the program fee was scheduled to be $26.95. Now that did not include your international um, airfare. So airfare will be on top of that $26.95. So your program fee is gonna look a little bit higher than what it did and what it was in 2020, um, but um, it will include the same things. And then on top of that, it will include your airfare. Um, so, and I, I believe we're looking at airfare, you know, sort of somewhere in the 12 to $1,300 mark. So, um, you know, you can kind of get an idea. The program fee will probably be somewhere between 35 and 4,000. Although that's, you know, we have we have we have not published anything yet, so that's just a very rough estimate. Um, if we were accepted into the May 2020 program, do we receive priority selection, um, Professor Ibaraki? What are what do you uh, would do you intend to give priority selection to students who were accepted to May 2020? Uh, yes, I think so. Yes, I can give priority to the student who could not go to Japan this year. Okay, and another question, as a business major, is there much value in taking this course in terms of progressing my academic career? I mean, I, you know, although you won't, you most likely will not be able to count this towards your major or minor, um, or, you know, potentially, I guess you could petition to count it for a GE. Um, any travel, I think international travel, um, where you're looking at other cultures and you're experiencing other cultures, um, I, I think it is beneficial, um, you know, I think you're going to take things with you that that you learn on this trip that um, you know will will help you along the way. So I know that that employers look fondly upon um, international travel and education abroad um, for both the soft skills and the hard skills. So not only are you it's what not what just what you're learning in lecture, but also you know kind of the the soft skills that you're learning as part of the experience. Is there a limit on how many students attend this trip? Um, typically, we take about 16 or 17. So, um, and I think that was the second question. Yep, right there. There's two right in a row. So those were good questions. Um, so yeah, we typically take, you know, right around 16 or 17. Um, and, you know, usually for this program, um, there in, in years past, there has been a, a small wait list. Um, so, you know, just when I encourage students, when you're writing those um, those personal questions in your in your application, that you do invest some time and make sure that you are, you know, kind of outlining, you know, why you would be a good addition to this program, um, not just um, why you want to, you know, travel to Japan, but also, you know, you know how you can relate, you know, personal and professional goals with what you'll be experiencing in country. Those are all great questions. Are there any other questions? So again, um, you know, if 
there are lots of considerations that we're that you know we're dealing with right now. Um, what I've been encouraging students to do is, if you do want to study abroad in 2021, go ahead and submit your application. You know, mid to late January, the university will make the decision on whether or not um, you know we can kind of proceed. Um, so we're also looking at in-country considerations. So you know, um, there are some countries that, you know, even if the university does decide to allow travel that they will not, you know, they're requiring a quarantine upon entry. Um, so we will keep students all posted um, and, um, you know, make sure you have all the information. Um, but like I said, right now we're proceeding cautiously, um, hopeful that we can get some students abroad for, um, for summer 2021. Um, any further questions? Um, I will hang out here for a little bit longer if any, oh, there's one has just popped up. So um, will any updates on the trip be posted on the study abroad website? So as I have updates, um, we will be posting them on the study abroad website. So as soon as I get that program fee, um, we will be um, posting that on the web page and updating the budget worksheet. I'm also going to try and pull up our, um, let's see, we do have uh, information about um, sort of our COVID updates as they pertain to study abroad. Um, let me see if I can find that. Um, I will send that out with, I can't pull it up here just um, quickly, but I will send that out um, with with the um, with the recording of this information session. So once we have it all compiled, um, I'll send you the recording. Applications are currently open for this program. So you can go in and um, begin to start your application. Um, you can start it and save it um, all up. It should take you about an hour to complete if you, you know, sit down and, and do it all at once. Um, but certainly you can begin it um, and then work on it little bit by little bit. Um, if you do not currently have a passport, I would say that that is one thing that you know you can go ahead and confidently do, especially you know if you're thinking of travel in 2021 or 2022, wherever you go, um, you will need a passport. So you can begin to work on that as well. Um, sometimes it's helpful for students when they're home over break to access all their documents like their birth certificate. Um, and it makes things a little bit easier to, to submit if they are working from home. So. Um, I would say to go ahead and begin your, your passport application process as well. Um, and we also have tutorials on our webpage um, that will guide you through that. Um, and I can also answer questions or help students out with questions about their passport too. Um, so let's just make sure if there are no other questions, I will hang out here for a few more minutes, um, but you can feel free to, um, to head on out. Um, I hope you guys all have a, a good holiday. If you think of anything else um, after we end the webinar, you can feel free to send me an email. And thank you for joining us.